Hey everybody, uh, thanks for tuning back in. So I got to put a little preface in this video, um, a little preamble, if you will, that, um, <laughs> so my GoPro had like two hours of footage on it, and then I get back and none of it recorded. So uh, you're gonna see that the, the video jumps around a little bit. I'm gonna make some references to some fish that were caught uh, that you, there's actually not any footage of. But uh, so all I got was my cell phone footage um, but uh, anyway, so you missed like 10 ladyfish, not a real big deal. Uh, but there were some, uh, some cool like scenery shots and stuff like that and some action shots that were on the GoPro and uh, you're not gonna be able to see those and I can't see them either, unfortunately. So uh, if I make some references and they're not there in this video, uh, that's why. But I said, I gotta make the video anyway because it was a, a really nice day. So uh, we have fun, me and, me and Buddy, and hope you enjoy. Morning, it is cold. Uh, it's like 50 degrees uh, right here in Palm City, Florida. And it's a Friday. I'm going to do an impromptu trip out into the river. I'm sort of on the fence of whether or not to bring the big boat or the little boat. Uh, you know, again, the big boat's a 25-foot pro line, so it's not all that big. But uh, compared to the little boat, which is a 14-foot McKee craft, it's a bigger boat. Um, going out alone today, and I'm going to bring Buddy with me for some company. So we're going to stay in the river, probably hit some bridges. There's some creeks that I... I'm pretty familiar with and we'll we'll try that out uh, but it is it is cold and it's supposed to be up to about 15 knots today so i might bring the big boat but i'm gonna go over the bridge to get some shrimp and i'll make the decision at that point um yeah i haven't had the little boat out in a little while and it's fun and when you're uh when you're alone then it, it's kind of fun to take out a little boat because it's sporty and it's easy to handle and it's got a piece of piece of cake so i might just go that route and hit some uh hit some creeks and stuff like that so uh stay tuned Let's introduce you to the 14 foot McKee craft. This boat is so much fun. Um, so this boat was a gift from my brother Kevin. Uh, he, he runs Selfish Charters out of Isla Mirada and uh, he had this as a bait boat and uh, it, it was in really good shape. It, it needed some elbow grease, it needed some you know some tune up and stuff like that but it actually came out really nice. Uh, we took the boat and put a stereo system in as you see there. I, I hard plumbed a, uh, a live well through there and it takes up a lot of space but sometimes you know during the mullet run we put uh, a whole mess of mullet in that live well there so the live well drains removable gas tank uh, you know the big investment that i had to make was i had to uh, put a new engine on it so it was 60 horsepower four stroke suzuki and um, after changing the prop on that thing it uh, it runs like a like a dream uh, new lighting all new wiring new wiring harness of course new uh, new throttle um, and then I put a depth finder on it as well uh, so it, you know obviously there was a lot of work that went into it put new seats in there there's a cushion that goes across the back seat we're not going to bring it today but I had that made um, you know, from scratch so uh, or, or reupholstered anyway um, removable gas tank that is a six gallon gas tank and that thing will run all day in that 60 horsepower engine so that's pretty awesome put a fuel filter on there uh, so quite a bit of work. Also, in addition, I added a uh, stainless steel trailer and, uh, or rather an aluminum trailer. And here's one adaption, or ad adaption, one adaptation we had to put on there. That is a uh, collapsible tongue. So that, that swing away tongue it's called. So the tongue actually swings away when you pull that pin here. And I do that because it goes in my garage. And if I don't do that, then uh, I can't close my garage door. But because I do keep it in my garage, um, it stays pretty clean. Once I wash it, I can put it away and uh, it stays clean until the next time I go to use it. So uh, anyway, so that is the 14 foot McKee craft. You know, while we're doing introductions, um, we just wanted to take a look at um, some of the other things that we did here. Um, one of the main differences on this boat now is that it has rod holders and it didn't have rod holders when we got it. So uh, you could see that these rod holders are not um, drilled into the boat. There's these rod holders are, so there's one, two, 
three, four, five, six rod holders. And uh, these are made by Sea Sucker. So this boat is so solid that I couldn't drill uh, into it because it would have been a huge pain in the butt. You can't get to the underside because the whole the whole gunnel is closed off. There's no underside to the gunnel uh, to get um, you know nuts in there. I also have a um, that is a dry storage, and that's also made by Sea Sucker, and that is waterproof. So I could put my phone in there, and my wallet, and all that stuff. Um, I actually made a, a little speaker box underneath, and I put the stereo in, uh, kind of undermounted so it stays dry. But uh, anyway, so these gunnels are really skinny, so a standard rod holder wouldn't fit there. So we came up with something uh, clever. Well, I didn't see Sucker came up with it. I didn't come up with it, but um, those things are really, really solid. In fact, we control with these with light tackle and uh, those rod holders will stay really solid. They don't pull off once they're on there. Um, the other thing that we use is that is actually a shallow water anchor. Uh, and it's basically a push pole that you could drive into the mud or into the sand and then you could tie up to it and it stays solid. You can, um, you know, really about five feet deep and we could still anchor without throwing the anchor, which is important because when you get in really skinny water, then you don't want to be throwing an anchor and scare away all the fish with the anchor chain. Um, we do have a little anchor, but I try not to use it if we could avoid it. And then uh, you see, I, I mounted it. Actually, those were cables or uh, cable holders uh, for the engine cables when I first got the boat. So I repurposed them so I could keep my shallow water anchor there. So uh, anyway, some, some clever adaptations to turn this thing into a real fishing machine. We would love it, it's a lot of fun. So we had a little bit of a bumpy run here. I, uh, I get this little spot in the river that I sometimes get some finger mullet in here. They tend to tuck around uh, around the, this little peninsula out of the out of the current. So uh, we're gonna see if maybe we can throw a net if they're here. And if not, we got uh, three dozen shrimp that we stopped at, at Gordo's again, or what used to be called Gordo's. So well, anyway, Buddy and I out here, St. Lucie River, and um, it just could not be a nicer day. It started off chilly, but uh, it's up to about probably 75 uh, this afternoon. So we'll uh, keep it posted. like Survivor Man and then he cuts off his pants because he's hot and then it gets cold again so he has to tape them back together well that's kind of what's going on now I had thermal underwear on when it came out here because I knew it was going to be windy and then I left it all in the car so, <laughs> so I don't have my sweater or anything and I'm, it's getting pretty cold out uh, it's just the wind the temperature is okay so it's beautiful out we just got a couple shrimp in the water I did try to get some mullet and my, my little honey hole for finger mullet um, you know, it, it wasn't productive. But we have finger mullet that mo moved through really heavy in the fall, and then somewhat, uh, almost as heavy in the spring, and it's just, it's a little early for that northward migration of this mullet, uh, moving back up north in the spring, uh, coming up to, to cooler water up in the Carolina. So, uh, anyway, so we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get something on some shrimp. And then also I got some, some Clark spoons here because there have been some Spanish mackerel out and I would like to get some Spanish mackerel for bait for swordfish uh, if this wind ever does die down and we go back sword fishing because Spanish mackerel are very expensive for bait. So uh, we'll try that. We got some other lures, some yozuris. Uh, you know, we got some divers and we got some suspension lures and uh, we'll see how we do here. Buddy's a little ang anxious because uh, dogs keep going by on the boats. And uh, we're in the intercoastal, so it's a little boat traffic here. It's a little bumpy, we'll see how long it's like. 
I just uh, just caught that ladyfish and I added a comment because some of my friends are going to be like, what the hell, dude? Because ladyfish are, if you ask my buddy Richie, the best redfish bait in town. You cut them up in chunks, like two inches, you know, they're long tube like, just cut them up in chunks, about two inches, and they throw them out there and snook and redfish love them. We used to kill them over uh, with Richie over in the West Coast. But uh, why can't I do it? Because if I cut that, uh, <laughs> last time I cut a redfish up, or a, a ladyfish up like that for bait, buddy ate the entire friggin' thing. <laughs> and I'm not dealing with it, because that thing was a big ladyfish. I got a bite here, I gotta go. All right, so it's getting a little bit annoying, but uh, we're catching a whole mess of ladyfish, but I'm hoping I can video it. They jump like little baby tarpon. I mean, they're really kind of fun to catch, but for the kids especially, there they are. There he goes. This is one hand lady fishing. <laughs> one hand video. This guy here is so hungry, he can't wait. He's gonna try to eat this sucker. So anyway, I figure if I lose it, whatever, I've caught 10 of them already. I only been here 30 minutes. But if I was trying to catch one for bait, I wouldn't see one all day. There they are. They kind of look like little baby tarpon too, don't they? Okay, so a lot of action in that spot, but it's the wrong kind of action. They're all ladyfish, and while they're fun, uh, it's time to move. So. Um, we're gonna go over to this other little cove here across the river and drop anchor and see if we can do a little bit better. Well, by the looks of it, that is a dead manatee. Wow. Doesn't smell. But that is, yeah, that is definitely a dead manatee. Let's see if we can investigate that a little bit better. That's really sad. I've never seen that before. Yep. That is definitely a dead manatee. Wow. I think is uh seven feet long that's real sad holy cow that's a big sucker all right so we had to make a move there we're not getting any bites uh so we're gonna go back kind of where we're almost where we're looking for mullet this morning um there's a big wind break there and it, it that wind did pick up uh, hopefully you got some action shots on the run over here because we got we got wet <laughs> we got pretty wet when you're in a 14 footer and you go by a 140 footer, um, you know, that, that thing throws a little bit of a wake. So uh, let's see if we can do a little bit better in here. I know that there's a bunch of not so desirable fish in here, but I know that there are some massive, massive snook in here because I've caught them before. So, um, you know, fingers crossed, maybe we'll uh, get lucky. I only got about an hour and then I got to go get a voice from school. So. Um, Pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Let's see what we got on the troll here. On the way home. Oh, oh, that's a nice little snook. Of course, the GoPro's dead. And of course, yep. GoPro's dead and I got nobody to help me. Oh, there he goes. Anyway, I'll call that a win. Well, uh, that was a bummer there. So that was a, uh, actually probably a keeper snook if, if maybe even too big. Uh, there's a slot size on snook, so you have to catch them. They can't be too big, they can't be too small. And that probably was right in the slot or maybe a little bit too big. It was a nice snook. Um, but I got no net and I got nobody to help me and the GoPro is dead and I try to grab my camera here and I got you some uh, seasick footage that uh, <laughs> Hopefully you can see it. I don't know. We'll see. See when we get home, but I'm out of time anyway I got to go uh, get the kids from school. So it was a fun day and um, You know, we'll try it again next week Be honest now Is there a better place to live than this because I can't think of it?